All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to your probably your first ever tutorial for this semester. Yes, yes, Saturday is quite early in week two. Um, I believe most of you are freshmen who are taking this module, so welcome to NUS. Um, yeah, um, I think I'll just go through some intro first. So, yeah. So, I think uh, I, just for you guys to know more about me, my name is Matthias Aaron. I'm a year three business analytics student, so I'm not an engineering student. I took cs 10 s not cs 10 e However, content is quite similar. Since uh, cs 10 e this year and last year adapted contents from cs 10 s And yeah, I've taken cs 2030 and 2040 as well. So for those of you who are interested in probably minoring in CS or anything, feel free to talk to me. Um, so yeah, I think just a little about my CCA life. I'm currently in NUS Angklong and Sambo and Nusu Committee for Information Technology. We're opening recruitments by the way, so if you guys want to join, feel free, just uh, PM me. And yeah, I'm not a Singaporean, I'm an Indonesian, so perhaps if you found my accent quite weird, then yeah, that's a reason why. So uh, how to contact me? Uh, first is uh, via email. Uh, to be honest, I prefer email because like if you send me via email, at least I'm not pressured. I can take my time to answer your question instead of being pressured like a text message. But since because it's online, right, and it's really hard to be in touch. So I've created a Telegram group uh, in a group chat. Um, feel free to join. Um, the purpose of this Telegram group is yeah, just to make sure that every, the flow of information can go smoothly. So if I have any announcements or any fun things to share, I can just immediately share in the Telegram group. I think I better turn that off. Yep. Okay. So yeah, um, I think also the what's good about telegram group is that uh, you guys can discuss for assignments although i don't expect you guys to cheat or share answers because i think the prof has clearly stated that it is considered plagiarism so you guys can discuss i think it's especially useful for those of you who are taking this module alone because uh, i think one thing that i have observed over time is that uh, those who take these modules with friends actually it applies to almost all modules those who take this module with a friend will tend to perform better because they have a study made together. So for those of you who are taking this module alone, I strongly suggest to find a friend and work, you know, find a partner in the in this tutorial group and discuss. Yeah, I think like one year back, I think I have one student who did that, who found a friend inside the module and actually discussed together. Also, uh, another thing is that uh, I really love to um, communicate through cosmology comments. So I will be grading this class. So I will be um, dropping comments, yada, yada, yada. And you can feel free to chat with me. Like you can even comment on the silly things. Like what do you think about the question? Whether it's too hard or not? I know some of you did that. And I'm very impressed that uh, a significant of you have actually finished uh, assignment one. For those of you who haven't finished, it's okay. Take your time. But yeah, um, it's it's supposed to be a trial assignment for you to just get familiar with the cosmology platform, to get familiar with Python and everything. Another thing is that I also teach other tutorial classes on Wednesday, two to four, eh, two to what, twelve to two, which is right after this and on Friday from 12 to 2 as well. So if you if you cannot make it during this sort of time slot, um, feel free to join another time slot that I teach, not another TA. Um, yeah, um, I know 10 a.m. is, I mean, I'm struggling to wake up at 10 a.m. So I kind of understand that uh, maybe it's a bit hard for some of you. All right. Um, so I think uh, I think one thing is that I will not disseminate slides because I think the prof will disseminate it himself. So yeah, don't worry. And tutorials will be recorded, but I think it's pretty good, pretty much be useless because I hopefully plan this class to be interactive. So it's not the lecture style 
a tuto uh, tutorial, I hope. So I hope you guys can actually do your tutorials beforehand and just participate in class. Uh. And also I'll be creating some notebooks for you to recap the tutorial materials in GitHub, uh, tutorial materials in my GitHub, but it's still under construction. So when it's ready, maybe I'll share it with y'all. I can share it with y'all later, but at the end of this class, just think help me remind me. So I think that's all about administrative via. Uh, if you guys are okay with it, just give me a thumbs up via the Zoom. Uh, reaction emotion thing. Cool. You guys now, you guys now are familiar with Zoom. I think the first time they introduced the platform, everyone is just lost. But good, good, good. For those of you who don't raise your thumb, I hope you guys are still there. Now I know tutorial is not. I know, like I saw your grading, right? Tutorial is not compulsory. So for those, for those of you who felt that. Uh, you guys already are pretty advanced and don't think the tutorial is necessary for you guys. Uh, feel free to not attend any of my tutorials. But I think, let me know first. So like, I don't, so I kind of know like, oh, you, you guys don't need tutorials anymore. Because, um, yeah, the tutorial contents are really tailored for, you know, discussing the tutorial materials from zero. Okay, um, so that's, that's all. So I think, uh, now getting to the content, first is our Python shell or console. Um, this will be our, yeah, let me remove the annotation. So if you guys are, so I believe you guys have been working with this Python console before. Let me just stop share first. So if you guys go to Python, uh, if you guys type IDLE, that should what it looks like. So maybe some of you are, so yeah, I can do anything with it. Like uh, maybe like uh, one plus two, five plus six, and yada, yada, yada. Uh, maybe some of you are confused in using this. Like how do you actually, um, write multiple lines with uh, Python with IDLE. So what you do is you, you go to uh, file, and then you click new file. And then if you click new file, it should pop out a new text editor. So you just can write here like uh, print hello world. Print this is my second line. Then you press F5 or you go to run and just like run module. You gotta make sure it's saved first. So yeah, I save like maybe like just test file. And then it will run here, right? So make sure you run it, uh, you create a new file first, save it and then uh, just run module, go to run, run module or pr press F5. I think when you guys attempted assignment one, this should be, some of you should already get a hang of it. But for those of you who don't know, uh, for your information. Now, uh, maybe some of you heard from your seniors uh, that last semester uses uh, Visual Studio Code. And yeah, uh, I'm glad to say that we're not gonna use that anymore. Uh, some of you love Visual Studio Code, which I'm not so sure why, but uh, for me, Visual Studio Code is quite a pain in the ass as it is not designed for Python. The reason we use Visual Studio Code is because uh, IDLE itself is not compatible with one of our exam softwares, which is Exemplify. But since this semester, we're not gonna use Exemplify, uh, it is safe to use IDLE. So I think that's, all, uh, that's introduction about the platform. Another thing that I wanna introduce is, uh, it's not gonna be used in, it's not gonna be used in lecture, but this is what I'm gonna use in my tutorials probably is uh, Python notebooks. So Python notebooks, unlike Python files, is that uh, it can create boxes la, where there are boxes that are text and box where you can just run code like this. So it's basically a, you know, a Python file. It can combine several Python files into one as there are several boxes and they are all and you can leave comments by adding text boxes above or below. 
and you can just run them normally. But I think this one uh, should not be of your concern first, but I'm just giving you guys a heads up. Lah. Because uh, I think this one is also good for you to learn. Okay. I think everything's good. So yeah. Um, so it will always echo the return value of the previous line, but some will not have any echo value because it has no return value. Okay. So I think uh, uh, that's all for Python. Now, uh, I'm going to try something new, and I hope you guys are awake. I'm going to use pollev.com for um, interaction. So if you guys can, right, just like go to pollev.com slash MatthiasAaron042 using your phones. We're going to use this quite extensively. And if you see a question, please don't answer first. Uh. Um, okay. Just, uh, I'll give you time to log in. This is the correct way. Yes. Eh? Oh, that's wrong. So I think let's try a simple question first. Think. Ooh. Okay. Okay, so how do you feel today? Okay, that's weird. It doesn't show up. Oh, okay. Apparently it does, but it takes time. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I guess it takes some time to load. Just, I'm just testing out the platform, guys. Just give me a moment. I think most of you are okay. La. I think I, I can't see it in my thumbnail, but like it just doesn't show up in my slides. La. That most of you are happy, some of you are concerned, and some of you are feeling naughty. That's good. Um, let's try another one. I hope this one works. All right, this one works. Uh, let's try this one. So I, I want to know, what is your major? Oh, we have a business student. OK. Oh, Jay. We have a geography student, we have a biomedical engineer. Cool, cool, cool. Interesting. We have an engineering science, electrical engineering. Oh, I'm quite surprised there's business. There's econs and business analytics. Oh, why are you taking 1010E then? All right, there's a, quite a variety. Okay, cool, cool. There's someone majoring in Post Malone, sure. Alright, so yeah, I hope that uh, it's cool that I have a rough idea of where you guys are coming from. It's cool, cool, cool. Law. Hey, don't be like that. Like. Don't, don't give him a uh, down vote. Okay, so I think we'll just start with our lessons. I think uh, uh, I hope I've known you well enough from this. So I guess, uh, yeah, this will be uh, our first tutorial question. Let's just go with it. If you just fill in the answer, lah, if you guys know. 
Wow, computer. Thanks for breaking breaking down with me at the very last minute. I swear to God, it works last night. All right. Okay, I'm not so sure who answered 786, but yeah. Okay, let me just uh, stop this first. And this system is being very unstable right now. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay, so like, uh, I mean, generally it's correct. The answer for three times four plus five is uh, 17. Basically you do the multiplications first, then you do the, uh, then you do the addition. Okay, let me just uh, hold on. Uh. Let me just pull out something else. Okay, I hope it. I hope this time works. Uh. So let's let's go to the next question over here. Um, let's try three times. Uh, let's try uh, three plus four times five. Okay, so I'm, I hope I only see one answer here. So yeah, in this case, the answer is uh, 23. Basically, you four times five is uh, 20, plus three is 23. If you can see, right, uh, they prioritize the multiplication first over the addition and subtraction. How about the next one? I think this one is quite uncommon, but I believe if you did your math, I guess you guys uh, know this already. Okay, there are some answers. So, okay, uh, okay, now you guys are lost. Okay, so I think uh, let's let's uh, do it part by part. So um, if you can see here, a double star. If if it's a single star, I think it's quite intuitive. You guys knew it that that it's a multiplication sign. But if it's a, a double star, it means it's a power. So like it's five to the power of three. So five to the power of three is one hundred and thirty-five. Right, five times five is thirty-five. Times another five is one hundred and thirty-five. Then, uh, so mod uh, and then this percent like sign is called a modulo. Please remember it, a modulo. So when uh, I do a modulo, right, I'm looking, I'm finding the remainder of the division. So earlier here from 135, I'll divide it by four, and whatever the remainder remainder is, right, will be my answer. So in this case, 125 divided divided by 124 will give me a remainder of one instead of three or a set face or this. Okay, so I hope that clears things up. Uh, this modulo sign, right, please remember, because it's very powerful. We use modulo sometimes to check odd even or sometimes to use it to like divide things by 10, taking the digits or whatsoever. Please remember that modulo is quite important in this module. So next one is uh, 97 slash four answers. So oh, I haven't activated yet. Very good. Some of you did the math. So 97 divided by 4 is 24.35. It gives you a flotation number. But then I believe in your tutorial, there's another question that uses a double slash. So what does double slash mean? It gives you 24. I mean, I cannot see the who. Please, not Shrek. Oh my god. 
Okay, it gives you the number 24. Um, I'm not so sure how many people answered this, but I believe a majority of you does. And now, the biggest question. <coughs> What's the difference between a slash or uh, within a single slash and a double slash? Uh, don't worry, I've made sure that your answers are anonymous, so feel free to drop your answers. I hope you guys see, but yeah. Alright, I think a, a majority of you say that one is float and one is integer. Uh, okay. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, I hope most of you already participate. I know like it's only a few, but I think that's good enough. So I think like the most correct answer is the number two here. I'm not so sure who is this. Is that a slash is a normal division and a double slash is the floor function of a normal division. So I think um, this one is quite important uh, because a double slash does return an integer value, but what is the particular integer value? So because like, uh, where's my, okay. So I have an example here over here. Is that when I divide 97 double slash four, it gives me 24. But if I have a negative number, minus 97 divided by 4, it gives me 25, my negative 25 instead, instead of a negative 24. The reason is that uh, with, a dub, uh, with the floor division, right, we round down the numbers. We don't just like remove the, uh, the decimal points, but we round down the numbers to the bottom, to the lower integer. So that's why it's called floor division because you know you try to touch the floor. If it's the other way around, it's called ceiling, uh, ceiling roundup. This, but that's not important. This one, what you need to know is that it is a floor division. It rounds down the number to the below. It just it does not simply remove the decimal points. I mean, uh, it won't be a problem when you are doing dealing with positive numbers, which most likely you will. But when you're dealing with negative numbers, just be careful about it. All right, so for those of you who answers, give a whole number. It's not precisely correct, uh, but well done. Anyways, um, so that's uh, what you need to know. How to escape. Okay. Cool. All right, so that's the first part of the tutorial. So the next part of the tutorial is a logical evaluation. Um, I'll explain it uh, later, but let's just uh, do a fun competition first here. Well, so how it works is that we have 16 questions here. And then, uh, oops, my bad. We have 16 questions. And each question, you'll have five seconds to answer. And yeah, just if you don't know, just randomly answer. If you know, answer it correctly. There's no prizes, and at the end of each answer question, I'll explain why is it correct, true or not. So the first question is, uh, what does one equals to one evaluate to? All right, time's up. Um, so yeah, one to one is equals to true. I think it's very, very obvious that, yeah, one is equal to one. I cannot explain this. I hope you guys understand already. Next question. Okay, the leaderboard we have, I mean, all of you got it right. Next, we have 3 plus 2 equals to 1 plus 4. Is it true or false? All right, time's up. So, oh, there's one of you who answered false. So the answer is true. So 3 plus 2 is 5, 1 plus 4 is 5, so 5 is equal to 5, like 5 oranges 
is the same as five or another five oranges. So with that, uh, we, we still have the same leaderboard. But then, what's three plus two? Um, exclamation mark equals sign one plus four. Okay, I hope you get it right this time. It is false. Oh, okay. Why is more of you getting this wrong? So yeah, um, this exclamation mark it means it's an unique, not equal sign. So if these two parts are not equal, then it will return true. But if this part are equal, eh, not equal, then it will re eh, sorry, if these two parts are, re are equal, then it will return false. Okay, be careful with the signs. Okay, next we have four greater than three. Is it true or false? Okay, I think most of you got it right. Uh, four is indeed greater than three. So how about uh, four greater than four? So yes, correct, most of you got it right. Four is not greater than four. Four is in, the, in fact equal than four. All right, cool. Awesome, someone is on a streak. So what about six plus three less than nine plus three? All right, as most of you have guessed it, correct? It's true, six plus three is uh, 9, 9 plus 3 is 12. In fact, if you just remove the trees, if you remove the number trees, right, 6 is smaller than 9. So, yep, well done. So, okay, next, true or false? Is it true or is it false? Time's up. And the answer is true. Um, I think for those of you who are not familiar with the all statement, all uh, tries to join two Boolean statements. And if any of the statements are true, then the entire statements become true. At least just one lab true, which is in this case, this one. This one over here is true. That's the entire statement here is true. So with that, uh, the next is we have true and brackets false or true. Is it true or is it false? Now, uh, all right, the answer is true. Uh, maybe some of you uh, read it from left to right, true and false or true. So like you evaluate true and false first, then you evaluate all true. I mean, either way, it's actually still true. Eh? In this case, you evaluate what's inside the brackets first. False or true will return true because in, the, in using the word all right, at least one of the values need to be true, which is this in this case, and then when this returns true, it will return true and true. When we face with the conjunction and right, all the statements must be true. And in this case, it's true and true. So it will return true. Oh, someone is on a roll. Oh, okay, cool. I don't know who G is, but well done. What's, what does not true evaluate to? Not true if a list of false, basically the word not negates whatever comes after it. So with that, uh, what's not false? Then easily not false is uh, true. I'm not so sure who answered false earlier. Okay, there's a question. Uh, what happens if it's a true and a false? Basically, a true and a false returns a uh, false. I mean, I can immediately show you that. I mean, you can always run it in your Python console. So true and false will return false. Because in the case of and right, every single statement must be true. Or in other words, actually, uh, yeah, they cannot be any false statements at all. Not even a single one. All right. I hope that answers your question. If, uh, if it's so, just let me know. Okay. So next, uh, next up, we uh, have not not true. There's a double not here. 
Is it true or is it false? Okay, so as you guess it, not not true is true. Not true is uh, not true is false, and then not false is true. It's a double reverse logic, whatever you want to call it. Next, we have not zero. Ooh, what is this? How can you not a zero? Okay, the answer is true. Not zero is. Um, I'll explain later, I think. I'll have a slide on that. So not zero is true. I think most of you already did your homework on that. Then what about not 9999? So yeah, not 9999 is false, okay? So see, when you not a zero, it becomes true. Not a 9999 becomes false. What happens here? Why suddenly? Like, there are numbers that are true, there are numbers that are false. We'll discuss later on. Ooh, someone's catching up. Next is 0 and 9999. If you figure out the two questions before, you should have been able to figure this one out. So 0 and 9999 returns false. Means if you understand intuitively, right, it means at least one of these statements must be false. So, not ABC. What is it? Is it true? Is it false? Okay. Not ABC will return a false, actually. So, it means that if you not an ABC, a string here, it means this string here is evaluated as true. Why is it? We'll talk about it later. Next is not. Uh, bracket. This one is an empty string. Okay, this means an empty string, not uh, not quotation mark, not an empty string. Is it true or is it false? Right, the answer is true. It's quite weird, isn't it? Like the earlier part, right? Um, when we have a string A B C, it's evaluated as true, but then like when we have an empty string, it's evaluated as false. What happens here? Now we've come to the end. Good job, guys. I think most of you did uh, well. I think you guys did some mistakes, but I believe those mistakes are innocent mistakes because you guys ran out of time reading. But well done. Good job, Ryan. So yeah. Um, now I'll discuss about the, the truth values. So yeah, in Python, right, we have a uh, key uh, true values, value true and false, and in Python three, okay, like very specific Python three, true and false is equal to one and zero. And if you do not believe it, you can always try it in your Python shell. Um, like true. So. Yeah, true is equals to one and false is equals to zero. So in this case, like you can always do like true plus false, true plus true is two. It's quite. And there's another thing, right? Is that anything that is not zero or empty will be evaluated as true. So that's why in the earlier case, right, uh, when you evaluate zero, it will be evaluated as false. But when you evaluate nine 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 nine, it will be evaluated as true. And here in this case, right, what do you mean by empty? Empty means empty in anything. Lah. So in the, in the earlier case, what we see is the empty string. So not empty string. An empty string is considered empty. There are other things as well, lah, like um, I think there's none. None is also empty. None means just nothing. There will be also, for those of you who are quite advanced already, there are data structures like, such as lists. So if you do an empty list, it will be evaluated as false. Empty tuples, empty dictionary. So anything that is empty, right, whether it's like a data structure or a data type, it will be evaluated as false. But other than that, it will be evaluated as true. So this one is pretty important because uh, it's it comes out in exams quite often. 
okay. Uh, okay. So I don't know evaluation. So there are some funky evaluations as well. Uh, like uh, what will be the evaluated values of these things? I mean, you're not supposed to be running it on Python shell uh, during exams, but for this demonstration, I'll run it for you. So if true plus one is two, false times five is zero, because false is equal to zero times five is zero, then zero plus not one is zero. Okay, basically when the last operator is the arithmetic operator, when the last thing that you calculate is math, mathy like, it will be evaluated as math instead of Boolean. I hope it's clear so far. I mean, like, I don't need to explain myself really well. I guess most of you already got it right. So if I can move on, please give me a thumbs up and zoom. If not, just leave me a comment. Cool. Now back to Paul EV. Uh, wait. Uh, we're going to the next part of the next part of the tutorial, which is the string manipulation, which is quite fun. I So I think we'll start, try with this. Uh, I think, let's see if you can get it right or not. Uh, so ABC plus DEF. Cool, it's ABC DEF. Very easy. Uh, gala times three. Anyone? Oh, yep. oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, sorry, my bad. I, I forgot to activate. Aish, my bad. Cool, it's uh, gala, gala, gala. Okay. Q, 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 can, can, can. All right, I'll move on. This one is quite fun. Combining uh, add plus signs and multiplication signs. Yes, it's a sinister laugh of muhahaha. Okay, okay, don't need to be passive aggressive, okay? We're not trying to do a ritual here. We're not trying to sacrifice anyone, okay? Except maybe sacrificial to the bell curve god. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, this module is not bell curve, ah. so like if the entire cohort fucks up, right? Um, there's no saving you guys, okay? This, this mod is not bell curve, so please try your best. Moving on. All right, I'll give you some time to do this. Okay, I see you. Some of you all already gave up. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think this one is quite okay. Um, I'm just gonna let you know, like, um, I think for this sake, for this exercise, I know it's pretty stupid, but trust me, it might actually show up during exam. So please uh, actually understand how it works. So if the, the actual answer, actually none of the answers here are correct, actually. The correct answer is this one. Uh, bar space, bar space, b do b do b space, jam jam, blah 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 blah. blah. It's very important to have the space because in your question, I, I remember there is there are spaces which is not quite obvious, but it's something that you need to account for. So please be careful with that, okay? You need to include the spaces as well. So if you guys haven't known yet, you do what's inside the brackets first, from left to right, and then you do the multiplication. 
Uh, pretty pretty clear. I hope you guys had fun. Uh, I hope those who answered Shrek, Control, and Two are fine. Okay. okay. I think that's all for string manipulation. Just make sure that you do not mix up, you do not show any subtraction sign or any division sign to string manipulation, okay? Please don't. That's a huge sin, okay? Other than that, it's obvious. Like, you cannot remove string. You cannot do that. If you want to remove string, there's other methods that you can Google, which is perfectly fine for, for coding classes to Google. So next is banana tree. Uh, if you've done your homework, what is banana tree? Yo, what? <laughs> I think that's the question, answer for the next question. Yo, guys, yo, help uh. Anyone want to answer? What's banana tree? Okay, uh, okay, sure. If none of you are going to answer. So, banana tree is actually not Onana or Nana or even Havana. I'm not even sure how Havana shows up. But banana tree is, oh, my bad. Assuming that this is a string, banana tree will return an A. Okay, and we'll return an A. Basic, uh, why does it return an A? You might ask. Um, if remember, uh, I think just a little heads up for those of you who are unaware. Uh, in most coding is in most coding languages, uh, index starts at zero. So when we do this, right, what we want to do is like we grab a character from the string, which is correct. In this case, we take the fourth element because th this element over here, B is the zero element, element number zero. A is element number one, N is element number two, and this is element number three. This is why when we do three, right, uh, what shows up is a instead of N, which is the third character. In fact, there's a fun fact, uh, fun thing here. Just if you, maybe some of you are curious, what if I pick an index that is greater than the length of the string? You can try that. And if you do that, we actually got an index error over here. String index out of range. So if you receive this kind of error, right, index out of range, means that you know that you, you kind of index something that is way outside the string already and there must be some error in your code. So the next part is actually pretty interesting. Uh, in fact, it's, it looks similar, but this case we have some two um, colon mark here. What happens here? So I guess, I guess everyone, every of you answered now, nah. correct. So yes, uh, we can, if you tested that out, two to four, gives you nah. So if we do man, if you know, this is the start part, this is the stop part, this is zero, one, two. Okay, now this may be debate. Uh, some of you might actually answer none, actually. And just be careful during exams. This is two, right? This is index three over here, and, and this is index four. Now, eesh. now why do, now in Python, right, this, the start point, which is index two, is inclusive, but the stop point is exclusive. So when we try to take a subset of a string, right, uh, we start at the start, and we stop right before the stop index. So in this case, we only take na instead of none. So uh, the next part is like, the last one is banana uh, one double colon two. What is the result of this? Oh. 
Okay, I'm not. Okay, there's R R R and there's B N N. So I hope you guys have been uh, filling your answers. Okay, those who with retract B N N, I'm not so sure why you've retracted it. There's even bar. Okay. Okay, let's see what the answer is. The answer is, it's in fact R. Okay. Uh, so what happens here is that we start at index one here, which is actually here, not the B. Um, I'll I'll lock this first so you guys don't change. It's, uh, we start at here first at the letter A. Remember, at Python index starts at zero, so this is actually index zero. And then uh, after the semicolon, it's supposed that uh, after the first colon should be the stop. But because the stop is empty, right here is empty. It's okay if it's empty, because if it's empty, it is assumed that the stop will be at the end of the string. So you just stop right at the end. And then the number two here over here is the number of steps that you take. So from R over here, you take two steps. Traditionally, you'll take one step over to N, but this one you take two steps. You take one, two. And you stop at the first, the second R, and then you take one, two, another two steps, and take another R, and then you want to take another step, but there's no more string as you stop there. Okay. Okay. So enough about the enough about string literals. Uh, where's my string? I. I'm never gonna embed full EV again in my PowerPoint slides. So if you, I think this one is a, vi a good visual representation. Where if we have a string of like S, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, this one is index zero, index A, uh, index zero, index one, index two, index three, and so on until this is the eighth index. So. When we do slicing, right, S227, we start here at this part and just go over to this part at 7. I think this is a good visual representation for you guys to understand about slicing. And I really do hope that you guys can learn about slicing well because this is a favorite exam question during either midterms or finals. And things can be very tricky. So please be careful with your slicing. So let's say we have a, a, a string a, a, B, C, D, E, F. So what's the result of S2, S2 colon, and S2 double colon? And are they the same? And correct, in, in fact, S2 colon and S2 double colon are the same. Because basically, um, when there are, it is empty, right? It is assumed there are default values already, like for stop by the default, it's just until the end. And for step, by default, it's just one step, one jump. So just like every, take every character. Now what happens if we get do a S1 colon 1? So we start at 1 and stop at 1. We get an empty string. Why? If we see the slides here, right? if we start at 1 and immediately stop at 1 over here, right? it means we never actually traveled. We never actually uh, collected any letters yet along the way. That's why we just stop here. And then, uh, how about this? Again, if it's empty, right? If there's an empty string, it will it will have a default value. So these two are the same. And remember, you don't really need to have columns all the time. And as brackets, empty brackets is a syntax error because in in the case of a bracket, right? A bracket with no colon, you need a number. You, I think here the key is to differentiate between uh, brackets with no colon and brackets with a colon or two columns. So here, I think uh, some of you may have been aware of, we also have uh, a negative step over here. So if we have a negative step, we, by default, we start from the back and move to the front. So in this case, when we have a negative step, we start, uh, Generally, we want, what we want is that we have a start that is greater than stop. 
because if we have a start that is smaller than stop, right? Say like we start at one and stop at two, we kind of cannot move backwards here because like technically we should be moving backwards to two, but instead we're moving backwards to zero. So definitely generally when we have a negative step, what we want to do is we want to have a start point somewhere on the right end of the spectrum and the end point on the left end of the spectrum. So here in this case, like uh, if we stop at two, negative step and step at two, we basically will stop here, right? Zero, one, two, we'll stop here at fat. So yeah, it's a lecture example. So if you just want to do a reverse string, what you can do is simply S brackets, colon, colon, negative one. Is she, okay, there's a question. Is, uh, is S uh, bracket three uh, minus one the same as S zero three minus one? The answer is no. The answer is not the same because of the nature of the negative step. Remember if uh, S zero three one, negative one, right? Um, three is here, three is over here and zero is over here. So I'm starting here and I should, eh, sorry, uh, I'm starting here and then I should be moving backwards to three. But the fact that the thing is, the tree is already behind me. Number, the index tree is already behind me. It's like, imagine like you are running in a marathon, but the finish line is already behind you, behind your start line. That's why like you basically run no distance. However, in the case of S, empty, colon, three, colon, negative one, technique, uh, we, we, we know that the uh, end of the race is at three, but uh, the starting race is by default at the end of the string because it's negative. So if we try out in our Python console, S is equal to A, B, C, D, E, F, so S three plus one will give me F E, but if it's S zero three negative one, it will give me an empty string. It's actually different. Thanks for the question. Uh, right? Yeah. So for negative step, right? The default the default value actually changes. If step is negative, the default start is at the last letter and the default end is right at the end. Oops, my bad. Okay. Is everyone clear on this? If everyone's clear, give me a thumbs up. If not, you give me a clap. If you're unclear, give me a clap. All right, cool. The rest of you who are, uh, okay, so, okay, someone asked for an uh, explanation for a negative step. Okay, I'll repeat. Um, okay. Uh, okay, how can I do this? So uh, I'll just start here. So when we try to slice a string, we, there's def there are two, two ways to slice a string. Lah. Basically a start stop and S is, or the second way is by having two, col three, two columns, start, stop, step. Okay. This one is by default is equals to a start, stop, I'm so sorry, it's a bit slow. All right, when we do two slicings, right? Uh, basically, generally speaking, when we have uh, slice a string, we have three numbers. Uh, the start index, the stop index, and the step. Step is 
the number of steps that you take, meaning like from the start in that's right, how many steps do you take or how many characters do you jump before you actually take that character? So if you do not have the step right, by default the step is one. But yes, there are cases where the step is negative. So when the step is negative, right, uh, when we have a negative step over here, what we do is, in fact, we, instead of jumping forward, we are jumping backwards. So if we have an S, empty, empty, minus one, um, the default is from the back. If we have an S, empty, empty, minus one. Okay. Over here, right? If we have an S, empty, empty, minus one, right? Uh, we'll start at the, we'll start here. We'll take I. Right, and then take one step back because it's a minus one. And then take it, take another step back because it's a minus one. Take it, then take, take another step back, minus one. And so on and so on. Okay. Uh, does it answer your question? Okay, so that, where does it stop? So um, by default, if it's empty, right, it stops at at the end. But stay, say, uh, okay, I understand your concerns. Say, say, right, uh, Say we stop at two. So what does what uh, string slicing actually does, right? Is actually uh, every before it makes the jump, right? It always checks whether the next uh, whether the next part is actually already greater or less than uh, the stop. Let me just show you. So in this case, I make a, my jump and I check. Uh, have I reached index two yet? No, I haven't reached index two yet. So I make another jump. Have I reached or exceeds index two yet? No, then I make another jump. Have I exceed, have, uh, uh, am I going to exceed or uh, arrive at index two? No, I'm gonna make another jump. It keeps, every time it's jumping, it's checking. So here, right, at this particular point, when I'm at D, it will check before it jumps. So I'll draw a dot, dotted lines over here. If I jump, right, if I jump over here, which, which this is index two, will I arrive at, will I arrive at two or and or exceed two? If the answer is yes, right, then I will just stop at here. Okay. Will I arrive at two or exceed two? If I will arrive or exceed to at my next jump, then I will just simply stop here. I will not make any further jumps because I, I want to stop before two. Say if, um, say if it's a, like a negative two, right? This one is negative two. Like we make two negative steps every time. I'm not so sure whether it works or not, but so means that what we're going to do is we start here, we make jumps, jumps, then here it's, it's actually index two, then we cancel this part out. Even in the case where it overpasses C, right? Like if it exceeds this part, this one is like the Great Wall of China. You cannot exceed this, okay? If it stops at two, it means that there's a Great Wall at index two that you cannot pass, okay? Does it answer your question, anonymous person? All right, uh, I'm glad that you got it. Let's move on, I think it's already 11 p.m. So I think uh, we have a little detour. Um, first is that, 
Yeah. Okay, first we're gonna do a great a little detour. Now earlier earlier right we did uh, some number comparisons right we compare four to three, four to four, uh five equals to five, etc. But how do you compare string? Now the way you compare string is uh I think this one is something that I picked up from Prof Adi when I was in Tatan Um the very formal the answer is you need to see the ASCII table over here. This is called the ASCII table. So where actually every character on your keyboard is assigned to a value. So if you can see here, right, uh, now it's zero. Now, start of heading is one, start of text. These are things that we never see. I think the first actual character is here at space. Then the exclamation mark, the double quotation mark, and so on and so on. But generally, you cannot memorize this, right? So, um, I mean, this is something that you want to consider putting in your cheat sheet one day. But say you don't want to put in your cheat sheet, right? This is the, just remember this as a dictionary, okay? That um, the earlier it comes in a dictionary, meaning like apple comes with four banana, it means that the it is smaller. So in this case, right, the word apple is smaller than banana. Because if you imagine in a dictionary, right, the word apple itself appears before the word banana. Now, if you want to make it more special, uh, generally we have special characters. We start with special characters first here. And these are no random special characters. These are uh these are characters that you can see on the top part of your keyboard. If you now look at your keyboard right now, right, from one to one to three, four, and zero, if you see those characters, those are the the smallest parts. Are. Next are uh, followed by numbers, then even more special characters here, like the colons, semicolons, uh, less than mark, equal to, greater than question mark, at sign, numbers, yeah, and then uppercase. After uppercase, there are some more special characters which I don't think you need to care. And then finally, we end with lowercase. So, uh, in practice, uh, apple is smaller than apple. Because here we see that we have an uppercase and this one we have a lowercase. Uppercase, uppercase is smaller than lowercase. Okay. There are some other special, so in this case, how do you compare? You do like, uh, first you compare letter by letter from left to right. So in this case, we compare A to A, B to B, then since both are the same, they are equal, then you compare C to D, which in this case, C is actually comes before D, so it's ABC is smaller than ABD. Next, uh, winner is decided when comparison reaches a different letter. And in this case, right, uh, that even though AB is shorter than all this long right, length, right, but the second letter here is B, second letter here is A, which in this case, right, B comes later in the dictionary, hence AB is greater than all these bigger things. Right? And a general rule of thumb, anything is greater than nothing. So in this case, right, we know that ABC in the first part is equal to ABC in the second part. But then ABC here stops here, then here is D. That's ABCD is greater than ABC. Just like a dictionary, okay? If you've never opened a dictionary, uh, try opening a dictionary. I don't know whether you guys have ever opened a dictionary before. I think I myself touched dictionary, like I barely touched dictionary back in my school days. Is it clear after here, until here? Can I get a thumbs up? Oh. Um, okay, if you need to leave the Zoom meeting, feel free to leave, okay? Okay, no worries. So, yeah. Um, okay, uh, okay, can you guys give me a moment? I'm, I'm a bit right out of breath. <laughs>
Next is operator precedence. As you can see, these two calculators calculate things differently. Generally, if operator precedence, uh, you, this is the formal definition where, where you follow. Where uh, exponents are calculated first. Then we have the multiplication, division, modulo, and floor division. And then addition and subtraction. And then next is probably comparison operators, equality operators, assignment operators. Assignment is basically when you assign variables. Like remember the equal sign when you assign variables. Then we have identity, which you won't be touching soon. And last is logical operators. Logical operators are touched last. If it's confusing, just remember bot mass, uh, brackets first, or then orders, uh, powers and square roots, division, multiplication, and addition and subtraction. Division and multiply uh, are ranked equally, and add and subtracts are ranked equally. As with that, uh, I'll bring back, I'll pull up back my poll EV <laughs> for the very last time. Uh, so yeah, with with us learning about uh, operator precedence, we know that we should be doing the multiplications first and then the addition. In this case, uh, yes, it's a seven. All right, cool, cool, cool that you guys are incorporating English to this. Cool, wow, guys. Next is one plus two times three to the power of four. Uh, which part should you do first? Okay, uh, can you explain bitwise and bitwise? Or bitwise? Okay, uh, we'll touch that first. Let me finish this first. Uh. Okay. Um, so yeah, you deal with three to the power of four first. And then after dealing to the power of four first, which I don't know what the result is, you multiply by two, and then you add by one. I'll assume that your answers are right. I assume that you guys did your math already. Okay, so even taking it to the further extent, uh, one plus two times three to the power of four minus five. Okay, uh, yeah, la. I mean, it's basically the same. It's basically, because this one is a, a subtraction, right? It's lower, so like we can just like take the answers from this and subtract it by five, which is, I assume it's correct. How about this? Not zero plus one. Now, we can see from our operator precedence, uh, where's our operator? we need to evaluate our operator precedence first. So in this case, we evaluate, there's two and false. Hmm, debate, debate, okay. There are, now we should, this time is the time where we should actually see our operator precedence. In this case, right, addition and subtraction is calculated first. So we do the math first here. Zero plus one is one. So it will give us uh, not one. Then because it's not one, and as we can see earlier, right, one is true. So not true will give us false. I think uh, for that, let's let's count it. I forgot. I, I think I remember like Prof Adi mentioned this one is quite challenging. Okay, yeah, it returns false. So this this is the time where you actually need to look at the operator precedence table which one is calculated first and which one is calculated last. Now, uh, yeah, Bingston is asking about bitwise operator. Let me pull that one out. Mm. Okay, this one. Uh. Okay, um, for CS and then E, right? Uh, I don't think you, you do not need to worry about with bitwise. For CS and then E, you do not need to worry about bitwise. Even me, right? If you ask me, right? I don't know about bitwise. In fact, I have never done bitwise before, even in my year three. So I think this one, uh, I can say 
with a 99.9% guarantee that you do not need to handle bitwise. Let me just cover that up. Yeah, you don't know, you don't need to handle bitwise. Um, I don't think you need to handle this as well. I don't think you'll be handling this as well. So you just need to focus the address. So for assignment operators, maybe there are a lot of different signs. If you are confused, maybe after class I'll help you exp uh, explain. Is the complement uh that one I'm not so sure because even if for boolean right we we tend to use uh and or not if I'm not sure if I'm not if I'm not mistaken right like mm, exactly correct we 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 don't use this actually. Especially for the ten, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, is to calculate binary numbers like yes. All right, so okay for the, for you who are very curious, right? So um, these two operations over here, bitwise, right, is used to calculate uh, binary numbers. So for those of you who are curious, but but that num binary numbers are if you ever see those like, you know, like a string of numbers that's just like ones and o's, those are binary numbers, are uh, that you can actually Google it. What is about, what are binary numbers? I'm not gonna explain here, it's not covered in our materials, but if you're curious, go Google binary numbers and the bitwise operator is used for calculating binary numbers. For complements, I'm I'm unsure. I can come back to you for that. Uh, I hope that answers your question. I know I didn't, but rest assured it's not gonna be in 10 E. Is that okay, Bingson? All right. I'm so sorry, man, for that. Okay, so, uh, okay, okay, a little diversion. So, what do we have when we type ask? Uh, okay, what happens if we do this or do this? Right. Uh, is this equal to this? And I think, like, I think most of you know that it is not. And it's because that their types are different. My God. Please don't break on me. Um, if you can see right, these two things are very different things. One is an integer and one is a string. That's when you actually do a, a, a plus sign right, it's uh, slightly different. The results are slightly different. If you comp a uh, plus sign for string is concatenation. You just combine two strings into one. And for the plus sign, right, for numbers, you just add numbers as normal. Hence, when you try to mix them two, it's, it will raise a type error. You cannot mix things up. And it's a huge sin to actually mix them up. But there are cases where you do actually want to mix things up. So that's why you need to convert them. If you want to convert them, you simply just like do use a function int bracket, put it in. And now this is the actual function where you actually like just convert a float number into a whole number. If you can see here, right, if it's a negative number, it just remove the decimals. It doesn't round down. So for those of you who say earlier right, about rounding up, uh, just taking the whole number, this is the function that you're looking for. So now that you know about that, now uh, you also know about variables. So you can actually store things in variables as well. You can store any type, even a Boolean statement. So in this case, you can store x equals to 5 greater than 3. X, the value of x itself is true. 
but then you cannot evaluate something that has not been declared yet. So in this case, we have A times B plus C, but it will raise an error because uh, A plus B, A times B plus C has not been declared. For proof, I'll try to do it. A times B plus C, it will give me an error because yeah, it's not defined. We haven't defined A yet. Even if you define A, right, say I have 99. If I do the same thing over again, a times b plus c now it will raise an error on b because b is not defined so when you do calculations make sure that uh you define the variables first right at the beginning before you do the math but i think this one is quite intuitive as well okay now uh i think that's a little detail on variables lastly is on turtle um turtle you'll be dealing with turtle for like at least three weeks so I think just a little FYI, there are three ways that you can import a package, a Python package. This is the first format. Okay. Sorry, uh, two ways. This is the first form way, and this is the second way. But for our course, please do not use the last form. The, yeah, please just don't use the last form. Uh. We'll use this form. Now, for my very last poll EV, Okay, this doesn't work. So I know you have the question in your tutorial. This will be my very last. Uh. So you have the question from your tutorial. Uh, so what picture is this? Yes. Like, uh, wait, let me activate the quiz first. Is it a triangle? a square, a pentagon, a Mona Lisa, or an actual turtle. So yeah, I, I guess uh, y'all are university students. Uh. <laughs> All right, turtle, nice. If actually someone draw an actual turtle using turtle, right, I would be very impressed. Um, I think you guys can trace this manually, like, you know, like starting from a point here, like say I start from here, from this direct this direction. If I draw, right, I start I move forward one hundred and then I rotate ninety, facing down, and then like I go another one hundred, and then another rotate of ninety degrees, and then another one hundred and then like another rotate, it gives me a square. I think it's pretty easy, self evident, and I hope you guys can do it. But thanks for those who think it's a an actual turtle and perhaps a Mona Lisa. I love your sense of humor. All right, then, well, that comes to the end of today's uh, tutorial, um, I think. So I think before we end, before, before we end, uh, just a little info, there are more turtle comments. You can go to the documentation, you just Google Python turtle. Oh wait, actually we're not at the end of the tutorial. I got something else to say. Um, yeah, I forgot. So, yeah, before we end, just make sure if you need help on assignment one, just let me know. Um, where, uh, wait, okay. The tutorial question can be found, find, found in your cosmology work bin. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Now some stuff. Okay, you can find your, okay. Yeah. Let, okay, now some fun stuff. Um, first of all, um, there has been a lot of complaints, uh, not complaints, uh, feedback from the past semesters that uh, you guys lack practice questions with Python. And hence you cannot perform well during practical exams which we completely understand. But we are all humans. The TAs are humans, the profs are humans. We're not superheroes. We cannot just like create questions out of nowhere. We cannot create a question bank. So instead, uh, we strongly, 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 strongly from the teaching team recommend you to sign up an account in Catis. Okay, uh, wait, okay, mean, uh, answer, okay, answer, and Nicholas's question first. Uh, 
Um, no, you do not need to create a function. Just give a, give me a one or two line of answer. That would be perfectly fine. However, I mean, it's just for you to get a rough idea. Lah. I mean, like as long as you can give me the, the right answer without hard coding, meaning like you plug in the numbers immediately to the variables, I'm fine with it. Okay. Okay. Uh... Okay, so, uh, okay, uh, with Katis, right, um, it has uh, thousands, of question, thousands of questions where you get, go to problems and see, like, there's a lot of questions here. So, uh, what the prof recommended is that uh, you, you guys can do uh, the easy questions for 1010. So, you guys can... Uh, rank the difficulty and do like questions that have like difficulty of one or two. I mean the first question, the first problem is the easiest. There's no input and basically it's one line containing the string hello world. Okay. Basically, uh, it was, it is very easy to sign up. Like, uh, for me, let's let's log out. You can always log in with a, a lot of accounts. There's even more login methods. Okay. I strongly suggest you sign up and there's a lot of questions uh, that you can do, okay? And yeah, uh, that's a lot of questions for you to practice. Another thing that I want to let you know is about Kaggle. Uh, Kaggle has these courses, a lot of courses on machine learning, but I know you guys here are here not for machine learning, but for programming methodology. So for those of you who want a heads up, I strongly suggest you guys to go to the Python course over here. It's a my mini course. Uh, so there's a mini course over here where you can actually learn like, I think this covers like half the semester's material all in this and this one is actually taught in a very nice way. So for those of you who don't like me teaching verbally or for those of you who don't like tutorials, I know a lot of you have different ways, styles of learning. This is another way of learning through Kaggle. You just like click and it will help go through, help you go through the materials one by one as long as you do it, as long as you follow it, right? I, I don't think there's a problem. Lah. I think it's a very nice way. I think I also did Kaggle before. Those people that I recommended doing Kaggle did improve, although like it doesn't help much lah. Because again, uh, what Kaggle teaches here is syntax, like how to code in Python. But what we're teaching in CS 1010E is uh, programming methodology. So the computational thinking, the logic, etc. Yeah, so there's a lot of things that you can learn. And after finishing learning Python, on Kaggle, right? You can, if you guys are so hungry for knowledge, you can just immediately jump into machine learning, pandas, and you know, like who knows, like perhaps you guys develop a passion for machine learning, which is kind of the next thing. And lastly, yeah, this is uh, my notebook. So uh, I should have an intro to, this one is something that I've created. Not as good as Kaggle, but if you guys want a summary, just do this. Um, you guys can go to here. I think I'll just copy the link here. I'll share the link later on 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 uh, Telegram as well. But this one is something I save. I also have a notebook for week two, but it's not done yet. So this one is so basically once you open a notebook, you can simply just click the on the button button on the top here. We have a button on the top, and it will like open you an, a web page, Google Colab. And there you can run the code and actually practice there. Lah. Okay. Okay, I think that's all. That's all for today. Um, if I know some of you have questions, uh, some of you ask uh, to be explained about the lexical graphical ordering again. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to stay. Uh, but if you don't, uh, then that's the end of today's tutorial.
Oh, okay. What is this GitHub thing for? Uh, this GitHub thing is just for me to personally store notebooks. So um, it's like uh, Google Drive, but for code. This one, uh, I, I just want to let you know that this is unofficial. Uh, so I'll be making notebooks for y'all. So it's try to summarize the tutorials materials into these notebooks. Uh, so like when exams are nearing, like it's easier for you guys to study. Lah. Yes, correct. Everything here is already covered in your tutorial. There's no additional materials in my notebook. So if you already study your tutorials well, right, I don't think you need my notebooks. It's just for summary lah, when the exams are coming. So any other questions? If there are none, then feel free to leave. Thank you guys for coming. Have a nice day. Yeah, have a great lunch, everybody. Okay, so... All right, for the, the one that asked about... All right, thanks. For the one that asked about Lexic... Okay, those of you want to leave? Where can we access the tutorial files? Are there any like codes or something that we need to do for tutorial? Or is it tutorial is just you explaining? I thought there's files in cosmology. Oh. Yeah. So we need to do stuff for... Yeah, sorry, I have been blown. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Um, where yeah, where just... do we see you? Under work bins so... Yeah, under work bins. So, okay. Uh, um. Okay, I mean, again, like, tutorial is not graded. Tutorial is not graded, but, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, under here, tutorials. Okay, I see, thank you. There's a worksheet. Tutorials are not graded, again, and, like, if you come to this tutorial and, uh, you come to this tutorial and, like, you know, um, don't do anything, just come and listen, like, there's nothing I can do to stop you guys, and if you prefer hearing me blabbering again, I I'm okay with that, but I think that's a purpose of lecture, okay? Okay, unofficial question. Do you recommend using another software other than IDLE? Because I want to re-edit my code, but I have to recopy and paste. Yeah, exactly, like, correct, Sam. Like, uh, the question that I went through the poll EV was actually taken from tutorial. Okay, unofficial question. Um, and again, I think I repeat, like, I think you have been using IDLE the wrong way. So, um, here is... Uh, I'll do it again. So this is okay. I'll close. I'll close idea. So um, shit. Uh, okay. Okay. So for Melvin, so this is how you see ideal E, right? Um. Okay, uh, give me a moment. Uh. This is how you see IDLE, right? And I understand that you need to re-edit and code. If you want to edit your code, you need to like retype everything, you know. So what you do is that you go to file and then create a new file or basically control N, you create a new file, press it, and then a new window should have popped up like this. And this window, it does not have the, the arrow, uh, the arrows like this, it will be just plain, uh, if you press enter, nothing's gonna happen. It's just like a plain text editor, like. Now, what you, you can do is like, you can uh, run this module, press F5, but before you need to make sure that you save this first, I'll save it as test.py, test.py access override, and then basically it, every time I run, it will immediately run the entire code. So if I want to edit, I can just simply edit on alongside of it. And I can press F5 or run module again and save and yeah, it will run again. Yes, I hope that helps answer your answer, Melvin. Uh, uh, Akil, I'll get back to you. Um, Ryan, correct. Uh, you 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 are you are not allowed actually to hard code the values. If you hard code the values, I'll give you a zero for that. You are not allowed to hard code the values. You need to like write the actual formula into the and assign it to the 
a variable that they ask, which is ans1, ans2. Okay. Okay, Akil, I'll get back to you first because there's, uh, I think, uh, yeah, uh, there's someone that's asked. Someone asking about uh, the lexical graphical ordering. So, um, uh, I'll repeat, I think, uh, lexical graphical ordering, uh, where's my ASCII book? Lexical graphical ordering, right? We follow this ASCII table to compare a uh, string. So uh, generally speaking, what you want to need to know is just special character. Basically, um, words that appear first in a dictionary is smaller than the words that appears later in the dictionary. For example, ap apple compared to banana. Apple is not greater, apple is smaller because it appears first. Okay, now if I have a short, if I should compare apple with a shorter word, right? Uh, generally, uh, the word apple here is bigger than uh, apple, A-P-P-L over here, because like in this case, right, it will compare the string characters one by one, A-P-P-L, and then like after the fourth character, right, uh, the this word over here, right, does not have anything else. Well, this one have, means that this one is generally bigger E is greater than an empty string. So in this case, this is true. Also needs to be very careful with uh, capital letters because in this case, right, uh, both are Apple, but because the other is capital, right, the capital A shows up earlier before lowercase a. So in this case, this one is smaller than this. And then lastly, uh, no matter how long your code, your text is, if there's another string that is actually like shorter but greater uh, in terms of like character to character comparison, right? Then basically uh, this thing wins. Uh, this one is bigger than this. Okay, so it's not when you compare string, right? It's not the size that determines the whether it's bigger or smaller, but it's actually the char each character, you compare each character one by one, first character, second character, third character. Now, when all the characters are the same, right, then you have a tiebreaker like this one. But even if in the terms in the tiebreaker, it's also the same, right, then uh, basically both strings are the same. Lah. Okay, does it answer? I hope it answers your question. I strongly suggest for this one, right? You just try out on your Python shell, uh, do a lot of calculations yourself. Okay, uh, okay, for okay. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. To be honest, Ryan, uh, like if you submit a function, perfectly fine. Um, yeah, 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 um, okay, I mean, okay, basically what I'm expecting is, uh, I'm expecting something like ans1 is equals to like 10 minus 11 plus 12. This is like the answer that I'm sort of expecting. Like if you decided to store it as in a fair, in, if you decided to store the variables in, uh, the, the values in variables, I'm fine. I'm fine having like A plus B plus C. I, I'm perfectly fine with it. But I cannot accept if you immediately write like ANS1 is like 109.67. This one is not acceptable. I'll need it in this formula. You need to key in your formula. Uh, for Ryan who submitted by function, I think I saw your answer already. I'm, I think I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay, for Akil, uh, okay, I think I'll stop sharing now. Akil, can you help? Can you share screen now? Perhaps, like, do you mind sharing your screen so sure, I can sure. help? Yeah.
let me see you run your code. Okay. Um, they only got one line. Okay, can you uh click on your code earlier? I want to see your code. Yeah. Okay. Why is that PU? Uh? I, it's like in the assignment, it says PU. I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, right, PU means pants up. So if, you know, when the, your pants is up, like, it means like you won't be drawing anything, right? Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. The assignment question, it's, it's like, I mean, that's part of the question. Right? I so. mean, like, it's like, it's like, you know, like, you know, your, 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 by default, your pen is down. Then you start drawing, drawing, drawing. Then like when you have a PU, right? PU is a comment that pulls your pants up. So any movement, right? Your pen won't draw anything. Oh, is that why? Yeah. So if I take this out, you should, should draw. Give it a shot. Like, you know, like, you know about coding, right? It's about yeah. trial and error. Just give it a shot. If it doesn't work, try something else. Ah, okay. I see. Ooh. Cool design. I see. Right. Cause like, see, there's a PU here in the question. This side, like. Ah, uh, I mean, like, yeah, like, I mean, like, if there's a PU, then it's correct. Like, like, it means that it 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 wants to show you like what does PU does. It's okay. Ah, okay, it, okay. There's a reason why it's ungraded. Oh, okay, okay, I see. All right, okay. Thanks. Are we given a specific amount of times to test run our code? Um. Uh, mm, not that I'm aware of. Like, I mean, uh, okay, let me, okay, so that, okay, every semester the policy changes because of the cohort size and basically because of the large cohort, right, uh, what we're facing is technical problems. Uh, tech, the infrastructure must be ready. So last year we used Luminous as our platform. So what you are supposed to do is that you code, correct? You code uh, on your own IDLE, then you'll need to submit to Luminous. Hence, there's no like online website for you to test your code and see whether it passed the public test case or not. So what usually the pro we do is that we actually include the test, test case inside the Python template, Python file template for you guys to run. And basically you need to manually check it yourself whether the output is the desired output. And I think it's also a good practice as your, for yourself to create your own test cases so that, uh, yeah, create your own test cases so that uh, you kind of know like how your code performs because it's very important that you actually understand how your code runs because if you do not understand your code, how your code runs, right, it's going to be a very hard semester for you. You kind of need to know how your code runs, so like you kind of can expect what's the output. Besides, that's uh, one of the exam question types, uh, where you are given a code and you are asked what's the output. I hope that's answer your question. Any AMAs, like, feel free to ask me anything. Even, like, okay, uh, what's the difference between Visual Studio Code and Idea Shell? Um, basically, Visual Studio Code is like a very robust code editor, very robust, like, it's it is intended for a very high level development while ideally shell is a very very primitive shell for python so um yeah um, i mean for 1010e right ideally is very sufficient and actually very useful in fact i find visual studio code, code quite an overkill and for those of you who do not have uh good laptops or good computers right Visual Studio Code can be a very troublesome. Last year, right, uh, I, I think like some people cannot use Visual Studio Code until the end. All the trainings on cosmology is not compulsory, right? Yes, it is not compulsory, but I 
I bet, I, I strongly bet, right, you, at the end of the semester, you'll be doing all the tutorial trainings because you'll need every single one of them, you know, like for practicals and finals. But no, it's not compulsory. All right, uh, I'll just end it here, I think. I think there's no more questions. I mean, it's been a pleasure. Um, have a nice day, guys.